This is USVI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for USVI News. I'm Emily Matson. We have a lot of local news to get to today, and we begin with details of the U.S. Coast Guard boat crew who rescued a missing snorkeler in St. Croix. On Tuesday afternoon, the snorkeler was stranded on the rocks in St. Croix off of Ham's Bluff Lighthouse. The rescued man was separated from his snorkeling group who had reported him missing. The Coast Guard 33-foot special purpose craft from Boat Forces Detachment St. Croix responded quickly to the scene and located the man stranded on the rocks. They delivered a rescue line effort before safely recovering him from the water. The man sustained minor scrapes from climbing on the rocks and required no medical attention, according to the Coast Guard. Those with the Coast Guard say dive buddies who quickly called for help likely saved the man's life adding that staying close to your dive buddies, having a good plan, and knowing when to call for help is crucial on the water. Don't wait, they say, until it's too late to call for help. And unfortunately on St. Thomas, tragedy struck when a baby drowned in the area of Oasis Cove Marina. On Tuesday, just before 8 p.m., the Virgin Islands Police Department, Fire Emergency Medical Service, and St. Thomas Rescue responded to a reported drowning of two people. When they arrived, they found that a Good Samaritan had rescued an adult female from the water and began life-saving measures. First responders learned a child was also missing, and shortly after, a four-month-old infant was recovered from the water. Emergency crews rushed both patients to the hospital, where the four-month-old girl was later pronounced dead by physicians. At last check, the adult female was on life support. This incident is an ongoing investigation by VIPD's Criminal Investigations Bureau. Surveillance footage helps lead to a man's arrest for assault. 42-year-old Keyshawn Berkeley is facing assault charges. Virgin Islands police say on November 26, this past Saturday, at 8 o'clock in the morning, they got a report of a man who was assaulted outside of the Happy View Market in the area of Lindbergh Bay. The victim told police at the hospital that he was hit in the face by an unknown man, causing him to fall and badly cut his head. He didn't know the man or what may have provoked him. Police got surveillance video and identified both the victim and the suspect. Investigators say the video shows Berkeley shoved the victim with his shoulder. The victim tried to get out of his way, but that's when Berkeley violently slapped the victim, causing him to fall, hit his head on the concrete, and pass out for about five minutes. That's all according to the surveillance video. Two days later, police identified the suspect as Berkeley and arrested him. Apparently, people are taking large amounts of sand from beaches across the territory, and the Department of Planning and Natural Resources wants it to stop. DPNR is warning of illegal sand mining, saying it's illegal to remove sand without a permit, and violators could get a hefty fine. The department says it's unclear why the illegal sand mining is happening, but warns against using beach sand for any construction activity. As they explain in seawater, Chloride is present, causing corrosion of steel and iron, which ultimately leads to reducing carrying capacity so that the structure built using this sand may not be sustainable. Also, beach sand isn't strong, so it cannot be used in construction activities. We have an update now on the long-delayed $27 million project to build the Polly Joseph Stadium on St. Croix. The VI Department of Public Works says the contractor is now working on the entrance to the stadium, and they reached a major milestone recently when the left field entry tower was completed and the traditional red roof was placed. Work is now happening on the right field entry tower. The top wall was poured last week, and the next step will be to place the roof on the right tower. The new stadium will have more than 3,000 seats as part of the baseball stadium. It'll be multi-use with a 750-seat Little League field and a permanent St. Croix Christmas Carnival Village. The project has been delayed, of course, for many years and is now scheduled to be completed next year. On St. Croix next week, there will be a huge produce distribution drive for UHC-covered GVI retirees. United Healthcare Wellness Program has teamed up with Rogers Farm for the 2022 Wellness Program for GVI retirees. Bags of fresh produce will be distributed on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. There will be 500 bags available for the giveaway. It's set for Saturday, December 10th from 1 to 3 in the afternoon at the St. Croix Educational Complex. 
The St. Croix retirees currently enrolled with the United Healthcare Group Medicare Advantage PPO plan will have to bring their valid member ID card to receive a free produce bag. As we hit midweek, COVID-19 case counts remain steady throughout the territory. According to the VI Department of Health, there are currently 34 active COVID cases territory-wide, with 26 on St. Croix, 7 active cases on St. Thomas, and 1 active case on St. John. Meantime, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced Tuesday it is awarding $3.2 billion in grants to public health. The agency says the money will touch services available to everyone in the U.S. The vast majority of the money, $3 billion of it, comes from the American Rescue Plan Act. That money will be used to recruit and train people like epidemiologists, contact tracers, and community health workers. According to the CDC, the grants will help state and local health departments that were stressed by COVID-19. And Twitter has ended its policy of monitoring tweets for misleading information related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Leaders at the social media say, say today that Twitter is no longer enforcing the COVID-19 misleading information policy. Under the policy, tweets containing purported misinformation about the disease could be flagged with corrected information or deleted outright if it was deemed harmful. Also, users could be temporarily locked out or even permanently suspended under the policy guidelines for repeatedly posting misinformation. On St. Croix, the public is invited to get into the holiday spirit with the annual tree lighting event. The Virgin Islands History, Culture and Tradition Foundation, or HCT, invites everyone to join for the annual Old Fashioned Christmas Tree Lighting Event in Butto Park, Frederickstead, on Sunday, December 11th, from 5 to 7 p.m. Santa is going to be hosting a fire truck motorcade. There will be holiday lights displays, of course, the tree lighting, giveaways too, a family friendly event to help bring the community together as we celebrate the holiday. So it is time to show off your holiday spirit. Decorating for the holidays is a tradition for many families, but this year, don't let a trip to the emergency room be a part of it. Here's more on how to safely deck the halls. From holiday lights to lighting the menorah, holiday preparations are underway and decorations are going up, but don't let them take you down. Certainly we see orthopedic injuries from fractures to uh, open lacerations, skin tears, uh, head injury. Uh, really the, quite the gamut. Cleveland Clinic emergency medicine doctor Jason Milk says most of the emergency visits from holiday decorating are from falls, people putting up lights or other decorations around the house. Milk says pay attention to the weather, check wind and rain conditions. If you use a ladder or a step stool, put it on stable ground. If you're going to be up more than a few steps, that there's someone there by your side to hold the ladder to provide additional support with you. And ultimately not to use the upper the upper steps, which usually mark do not stand on that most of us probably still tend to go up on. Dr. Milk says there also tends to be electrical injuries this time of year as well. He says to examine lights to make sure they're not frayed or broken and look at extension cords and outlets. If you're unsure or if you're using equipment, uh, electrical cords that are either frayed or in not good condition, it's either to get new or to advise an electrician before you're overloading a, an outlet or a power socket. If you do get hurt, especially from a fall from a significant height, Milk says it's always best to see a doctor. In these circumstances, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Uh, and certainly we'd like the opportunity to, to intervene early in these situations. And Dr. Milk says if the weather is wet or windy, you're more likely to slip. So he says it might be best to put off decorating until conditions improve.